Warning, the following video is very long and contains pausing and rewinding that may not be suitable for all audiences. This is what we call a full watch. Viewer discretion is advised. So we've got you this Tony Hinchcliffe documentary, and yes, they made a Kill Tony documentary. And like I said on the last show, I can't believe that this isn't something that the entire world is making fun of. It's so crazy bad. We didn't even time code it. We just said, this is kind of a full. We're yes, just going to scan through it. I'll me. skip forward when it gets boring. But we got to show you what's been going on with uh, Tony Hinchcliffe. Now, remember, Kill Tony is on hiatus. They're doing that show without an audience at the Better Box Studios. It's completely become a Christian camp. Tony is more miserable than I've ever seen him. Uh, and this doc will speak for itself. They put this out. Even the title is sickening. Wait till you hear this. It's called Road Kill. The show's called Kill Tony. This is a documentary series about them on the road called Road Kill. And what makes this so sickening, and this is not a bit. Remember, we don't show you bits on Red Bar. That's how I know something isn't a bit. I don't show you other men's bits. I show you their mistakes. And this is a giant one. <laughs> they set out now kill tony in his head believe me when i say this it's one of the easiest shows to make i've even done versions of this show it's basically american idol where you're insulting people who do one minute of stand-up comedy this is very easy to do in fact the reason you love this program is just because you love that format any person doing uh in tony's position or in red band's position the show would in fact be better all right, they're awful at this, and it it really shows when you watch their um, studio lists ones, where they're doing it from the Better Box Studio, and there's no audi- the audience audience list ones. It really shows how bad they are. I mean, they really don't have anything to say. So when you see this, remember they're taking themselves this seriously over this stupid little. Even if a comedian, even if like Bill Hicks was talking about himself like this, you would make fun of it. The world would say, no, thanks. You're just a comedian. So wait till you fucking see this. We're going to just start from the beginning. This is what's called a partial full. <laughs> wait till you see this. Hey, we rolling. Everything good? <laughs> Roadkill. Enjoy. Let's have one. Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> it starts off with Tony at a dive bar. I guess this is. Oh, they're in. Calgary, Canada. My hometown. I know it very well. I love Calgary. Now, they're not actually in Calgary, which is weird. They're by the airport in Calgary. They have an airport hotel, and they found some... It's weird, because Calgary really doesn't even have dive bars like this. You'd be really... It's really hard to find I a mean, coin... I mean, nobody goes to them. No. I mean, you'd have to spend weeks trying to find a coin-operated pool table <laughs> like this. But it starts off with Tony and Jeremiah playing pool, and they're doing their, what would you call this? They're doing their uh, masculine their tele- pool Well, no, that, stance. but they're telling their story over a game of pool. So this documentary takes place while, uh, you know, they're going to tell the story over a really serious game of pool, and then it's going to cut and show you what they're talking about. Now, they are taking this game of pool so serious. These are not uh, regulation sized tables. These are the little inky dinky coin operated tables. And they're playing pool as if this is a tournament and they're, they've got like a $200,000 bag at the end of it. And they're on national TV as pool sharks. It is the douchiest thing I've ever seen. You'll see more of this when we play it. Bad break. Wow. Just so like- I think. I think Tony is going to try to play this off as a joke, but all of the pool scenes where they're doing their talking, they miss almost every shot. I mean, like when Tony breaks, the fucking white ball goes into the pocket. He's scratching left and right. They're bouncing balls off the table, but they're taking it dead serious. And whenever Tony misses a shot, he's like, fuck, as if he wants you to know normally he sinks these as if that fucking matters. Kill Tony. Sometimes you get a big break. Cheers. Sometimes to the dock. You end up with nothing. That's gold right there. 
You're going to love this. Sit back, relax. You can relax now. Look at that. Hey, now. That's Jeremiah playing pool. It's all good. <laughs> They're showing all the... Uh, Give a little bit. Give a little bit of your love to me. Nice shot of Jeremiah's ass. His tushy. Come on, guys. Let's get this doc rolling. I'm solid, huh? Yep. <laughs> They're showing their shitty setup. This is, by the way, what these clubs look like that they perform in. Look There's, at this place. Look at the place. They've got these cheap tables lined up. They've got the same chairs that you would find in, you know, a 1980s old country buffet. Rooms like this across America don't even exist. This is like if you went to Dearborn, Michigan and found like some service hall where the ex-military people hang out, this is what it would look like. So remember, when they're going around to these clubs, they're not fancy, cool clubs. They're these and they're not cool dive bars either. They're halls, bingo halls. This is like a venue that's attached to like a shitty hotel by the airport. I'm Somebody just sure. yelled out bingo. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly. These are bingo halls. They, they're, they, they reek of a bad time. VFW hall. There you go. Look at this place, man. All the lights are on, by the way. So here he is playing pool, taking himself really serious. They're showing the microphone. Oh my oh God, this shit. is where the is kill. You used to do comedy? Watch this. It's Look crazy. at this pool shot. Tony's taking a. It completely misses. <laughs> Why are you showing miss? So, the comedy store didn't have much going on at the time, and there was Red Band who had his own podcast network. So now he's telling the backstory. How did it all come to be? And they're telling this as if it was like Barack Obama's road to politics <laughs> and how he grew up. You know, they're showing, showing old pictures of Tony. And by the way, Tony's doing all this. Why? While chalking up a cue as if he knows what the fuck he's doing with the chalk. And Jeremiah, you know what's so funny? The rest of the Kill Tony cast, and we showed you a little bit of this during their Q&A, during their audience list show. The rest of the cast, as long as Tony talks in this serious tone, the rest of these dummies all fall into it, too. And they have that somber face and they all start going, yeah, you'll see when Jeremiah chimes in, it's vomit inducing. Didn't have much going on at the time. And there was Red Band who had his own podcast network. I was featured on a lot of the podcasts. And so when it was time to come up with my own, I wanted to do one live in front of a live audience because that's more fun than sitting in a boring studio telling the same stories about your life over and over again. So, wow. uh, so we went live at the comedy store nice. and I used my comedy store open mic hosting <laughs> experience where comedians would do three minute long sets and then I would do I'd make fun of them or give them advice from on stage, and I decided to mash that all together wow. into a, uh, a super open mic. Damn. <laughs> well said. So I you went know, Sometimes I'd be sitting in the back of the original room at the comedy store, and another comedian would sit and next to me. And they're walking around as if they're... I, I've seen this before. I've Did seen this act. This? Well, no. You know what it is? They're being documentary eyes and so what they're doing is while they're being filmed they've decided that they're going to do documentary tone and in their heads these two boys are pretending that this is the story of mike tyson's upbringing this is the story it's like an episode of chef's table yes exactly finally somebody tells this classic comedy tale that the world has been scratching to to find out <laughs> and they've got it in their own heads they're imitating what they've seen people act like in docs they're forgetting this is just brian redband jeremiah wonders and the stupid ass tony hinchcliffe <laughs> okay this is not something to take so seriously but watch this gets way worse and we would be laughing at ourselves, whispering in each other's ears about what, making fun of whatever comedians on stage to each other. 
and it Jeremiah. would be some of the funniest stuff. And I thought to myself, how do we show the comedy fans this side of it? Like comedians Look talking about comedy with comedians. And uh, that was, was another big... <laughs> They're going to claim that this was done on purpose to be funny, missing all these pool shots. That's just the way their billiards game went, folks. Jeremiah, look at this shot he does. There's never been a documentary where they keep in missed shots. Watch talking it. about comedy with comedians. And, with? Uh, he literally bounced the scratched. fucking cue ball off the side there. He didn't even hit the ball. <laughs> This is really uh, embarrassing. Do not let them go. Well, yeah, obviously, this, this, we did this on purpose. No, no, no. You wanted to sink all those shots. If Tony could show that he's amazing at pool, he yes. would have. He doesn't do bits that make him look stupid. This is the thing people don't get about people like Tony Hinchcliffe. They don't do self-deprecation stuff. They don't want to look like fools. They're only doing cool guy stuff, okay? They don't want to look like asses. That was another big part of the uh another big part of the idea is like wow look how important yeah tony is um, looking at the table how do we uh this gets way worse these new comedy fans what it's like from that perspective wow so we got a guest and we started this look at tony's little ass Sticking out, he's got those Marshalls underwear, 10-pack. <laughs> you know, you've gotten these underwear as a birthday gift where you go, what are these, like body armor, umbros? What the fuck kind of underwear? <laughs> and then you go, oh, I get it. Your mom went to Marshalls or TJ Maxx six months ago and bought everyone she knows Christmas gifts. He's wearing Christmas gift boxers, bro. And they're showing your whole butts out. Look at his little prop notes that he he's put got in his notes pocket. in so there. Like yeah, okay. A true comic. So here, this gets way worse. Show. And um, then we just constantly. Is there anything worse than a guy who sinks a shot and then walks around the table without changing his face? Like no reaction. This is what guys do. They don't play pool at all, and then they're at a bar with pool, and all of a sudden. It's like the most serious game. And when they sink a shot, they do this thing where they go as if they meant to do it. And they continue to walk around the table, setting up their next shot in their mind Doesn't mentally. Doesn't even phase them. If you sink a shot in pool, I want you to do this. Whoa, oh, oh, I got one. I got one. They never do that. No. They always try to keep their cool. It's sick. As if, yes, of course, that's what I meant to do. The only thing silly about this whole operation is the fact that I, you know, <laughs> You're shooting <laughs> balls into holes. Okay? This isn't a, seri a serious affair. Get that face off. There's nothing more sickening than a guy who just sunk a shot and he's already walking around the table to fancy his next sinker. <laughs> it's just a bar game. Imagine if I treated darts this way. All right? Loved it from there. And the rest is history, I think. That's how it started. Thank the God for the comedy history. store. Uh, Look at this. Oh, a shot of dummy Brian Redband <laughs> trying to figure out wires. There he is. If they only knew what audio would be produced from this shitty box that he found <laughs> on Amazon. You know, they're showing this glamour shot while Tony's talking. It cuts to Brian Redband setting up the cords. Like, if this wasn't, it seems like a parody. It does seem like a mockumentary. Like yes. It seems like the It office. seems like yeah, it seems like the show uh The Comeback with Lisa Kudrow. It seems like the early episodes of The Office where here's this total schmuck, but they're doing a serious doc about him. And but, look at all the asshole things he says. And you know how I can prove it? Nobody, none of their fans in their comments are going, ha, 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 no. this is great. They're all going, Tony Every, killed Tony, well, deserves so much respect. This is another guys. thing, and this goes to show, only dummies are watching this stuff. You know, our comment section about these guys on YouTube is more than enough evidence to know that these guys, it, it, I, my thesis is finished, by the way. I don't know if you've seen this, but I used to, find real pleasure experimenting and learning from the comments and going back and forth with these guys to see now i know I, i'm good they're fucking idiots and if you go to the comment section of this all you see is wow it really goes to show how much hard work goes into this like 
wow, these guys really... So you fell for the fake bullshit documentary, too? There's not one person in the comments going, dude, this is super cringe. What are you doing? Like, this should be... Uh, you know, anyone who says they're a comedy fan should be laughing like hyenas at these. F Especially That's it. this. I mean, sure, kill Tony, whatever. But this doc is like so serious and self-important. So nobody serious. Nobody is even saying that except for us. Uh, listen, uh, like I said, there's no more question. I haven't figured out. The people who watch this are those Travis Zell non think I hate to say this NPC thing, but that really sums up what these people are. They don't know. They only know what the bigger guys tell them to know. So if Joe Rogan and all these people, they've all said these guys are good, that's enough for them. Because you go, how does Rick Glassman only have 16K subs? He's had all these guys on. He's had Andrew Santino on. The episode gets 200,000 views. Why aren't people subscribing to Rick Glassman? I'll tell you why. Because nobody talks about how great Rick Glassman is. They talk about how great Santino is, how great Tom Segura is, how great Burt Kreischer is, and that's the only reason these people think they're funny. Okay? That's all it takes. It takes some hype. It's the same thing as sneakers. Here's how you know this is all bullshit. Somebody at home could come up with the coolest looking sneaker around. Doesn't mean anything. Nobody cares. But if Virgil, Ablandata, or Nike, or... If the sneaker come, I remember when I first started looking at sneakers, I saw this one sneaker by a football player, and to me, it looked exactly like Kanye's Red October sneaker that was worth $20,000. And in my mind back then, I go, why isn't everybody gushing over this shoe? It looks identical almost. Uh, it doesn't matter how good the sneaker looks. It matters how hype it is, okay? The value of its allure the value of uh, uh, you know people wanting it it's the same thing with comedians rick glassman is better than tony hinchcliffe rick glassman's better than andrew santino well, let's compare those two wouldn't you guys much rather watch a rick glassman episode than santino and these are supposed to be comedy fans they refuse to subscribe to rick glassman because nobody hypes him up you don't turn on rogan and hear 15 guys go rick glassman's hilarious rick glassman's the best so they don't know he's the best. They only know what they're told. Case closed. Let's go back to the dock. It's Brian Redband plugging in cords. That actually develops people and cares about their own type of artists. Because uh, I don't think it would have been able to really gain momentum anywhere else. There was, there's so many comedians hanging Listen. out there at all times. and. <laughs> The night that we do it, there's an open mic. Like and, Tony's um, over serious tone overlaid with Brian of Red Band, Band bumbling around, grabbing these bumping cords. into things. Like, Big booty Red Band, and all of their fans are just like, "This is really cool to see." This is the really inspiring. So you've been so tricked you don't with even their tone. See how funny this is. Tony Hinchcliffe literally can use a fake documentary tone, and he's got his whole audience tricked. If <laughs> I put this out, I would be roasted, toasted, and burnt to a crap. <laughs> So there's a lot of comedians around. They wanted an extra opportunity, especially once they found out that, you know, thousands of people are listening to it and whatnot. And that's it. Look at this. Another miss. Here's Joel trying to figure out how to set up a snare drum. Look at his confused face. How does it work? It's a snare drum. Put it on the stand and shut up. Sick of drummers setting up their snares. And that's how it started. By the way, this Joelberg is always tightening shit and fixing. It's all going to sound like crap. I hate to break, break it to you. Have you seen the show? You can literally bust out a bucket with some of those poor people drumsticks and it's going to be the same shit. <laughs> Your drums don't sound good. Ludwig, take back the set. There, hold it there. Look at this. Is there yeah. anything more pathetic than the host, the star of the show, setting up his own table? This is why I stopped doing live events. I had to set up the stuff myself, and all the crowd would be watching me. I found it mortifying. Well, now you have me to set it up. No, that's even worse. Oh. I would do these live events, and this is why I learned it's terrible. It's not for me. I'd have to set up all my own equipment, and the whole crowd would be sitting there like this. 
And they go, stop looking at me. Stop it. All of you, stop. And I learned right away, <laughs> anyone who wants a ton of people staring at them is perverse. It's not. This is why sane people don't do stand up. This is why I've gathered all stand ups are crazy to go on a stage and see all those people looking at you like this. You shouldn't want. That. Even if you're doing well, you shouldn't want that. It's disgusting feeling. Go try it. Go to a grocery store and go, can I have everyone's attention, please? You will crawl into a ball. It feels so disgusting. These people love it. Look at Tony fixing his stupid table. Good. Oh, here's Jeremiah. See, that's a little Working bit. on his saxophone with a serious face as if it's not going to come out sounding like a uh, d uh, junior high school kid with his first recorder. Remember those? Woo, 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 woo. Remember in school, your teacher made you play the recorder for a joke or something? Your parents all had to shell out $35 for a plastic flute? I love that thing. And that sounded better than everything coming out of Jeremiah's pipes. Hello? Here we go. Pull back even. Oh, yeah. And why do they say 2.5 hours to showtime in quotes? Yeah, the uh, it says to showtime. The text was a no, it's, back, but it'll it come is showtime. It's not a fake showtime. Here, <laughs> look at Red Band, Big Bertha, <laughs> yeah. getting ready for his yeah. mukbang. Yeah. Oh my God! Wait, I just remembered. There are so many fun. We haven't even seen the good stuff yet. No, this is just to show you remember how fucking douchey part? they are. And remember, the slow tone of this is what kills me. Look at this, another shot of the pool. One oh. of the things that is the, Look at this. without a doubt, oh, got the driving it. force of a lot of our success is... Uh, Ooh, and that got to... T Tony don't like it when Jeremiah sinks a ball. <laughs> Look at how serious the billiard brothers get when their ceramic balls get sunk. How douchey. I don't want to... If you're playing pool and you don't have a big smile on your face... You put that cue back into the rack, and you say, sayonara, bar. This, I didn't do it right. I don't want to see you being serious around the, the pool table. Get talked about a lot from other comedians on their podcasts. There's moments where on Rogan's podcast, there's Ari Shafir, Tom Segura, oh my God. and wow. Bert Kreischer, and they're all talking about how great Kiltoni is and how... Again, this is like Joe Rogan uh, spending hours writing his stand-up. It's showing pictures of Brian Redband spending Earth's time on the audio. Uh, you know, you shouldn't show that you actually try to make your audio sound this whack. Okay? I can't believe there's actually effort. I just assumed you went to the place and lit up a cell phone and started recording what was coming out of the speakers here. He's got all this equipment. Look at all this equipment. Bert Kreischer, and they're all talking about how great... Kiltoni is and how fun I am at making fun of people and how funny the band is at being Listen to how he talks about how himself. Don't I skip over this. Making fun of you know, people. everybody talks about how great I am and how wonderful I am making Listen to what's coming out of the man's mouth. Segura and Bert Kreischer and they're all talking about how great Kiltoni is and how fun I am at making fun of people. And, and this is what I mean about his listeners are NPCs. They're listening to this. They've been fooled by the tone, and they're not realizing, whoa, Tony's actually being a fucking horrible douche! <laughs> this is everything a comedy fan should be making fun of right here, and yet they're buying into it going, oh, wow, man, yeah, wow, I didn't realize how respected Tony was. Rock on. This show's actually a lot deeper than I thought funny the band is at being silly and hilarious and, and that's like a, a major endorsement is there any chance that okay. uh someone ordered a pizza for us oh, this get is amazing. ready this is amazing I'm get ra goosebumps. okay everybody get up i want up up on your feet no you don't gotta get up on your feet but whatever you're doing stop it right now don't even eat your mozzarella sticks <laughs> um Here's where it gets good. Now, Tony Hinchcliffe has what's called a rider. This is why he got into comedy. For <laughs> perks like this, having a rider. We all heard, oh, Aerosmith has a rider for their green room meeting. Uh, they only get green M&Ms when they perform. 
Now, this is something that is so foolish. Even people in the industry have gone uh, have gone to say, oh, the only reason we have riders, the reason they were invented is because there's so much going on during a tour that uh, we want to make sure people are reading the contracts. For instance, we have like a lot of clauses in the contracts about safety and lighting and how it all goes. So uh, we put in small things into the rider and then we'll know right away if they actually read the whole contract. So, for instance, we'll put in the contract, our dressing room will only have yellow gummy bears in it. Okay, a big. And if they don't do that, then we're worried. Okay, did they skip out on the safety, too? Okay, you've all heard that story. This does not apply to Tony Hinchcliffe's bar show in <laughs> Calgary. The fact that Tony has a rider is so sick. Coming from somebody who ran a comedy club for several years months uh it would be so annoying if someone had a rider you're here to do a few hours of stand-up you don't need any special gifts for your dressing room you could bring those yourself you drove in you got all this shit yourself we don't need people from the club running out and wasting their time buying you pizzas and gummy bears tony hinchcliffe and this is sick he forces these small establishments to go out of their way running all over town to buy them things I can't believe they kept this in the dock. Well, you can't. This is Tony's proudest moment. Having Wait a rider. Wait till you see this part. <laughs> You're going to fucking die. Is there any chance that uh, I'm gonna have another someone drink. ordered a pizza for us? Was that on our rider? Is there any chance that somebody ordered a pizza for us? Is that on our rider? I'm taking my time with this. I like this one. Now... I also think it's bullshit to eat right before doing a show. This is why they come off so bad and tired. I don't eat before my shows. I eat nothing. If anything, I have a half a bowl of oatmeal, and I haven't had that in weeks. You don't want the blood going to your stomach. It's a typical a comedy pizza too? rule. Oof. Oh, that's awful. You don't want to eat. You want to be. You want to have eaten at least three hours before your show, and then you'll eat after. You want an empty stomach. You want that energy. You don't want to be bogged down. The fact that these guys are eating pizzas right before they go on the air is baloney. But this gets much worse than just him ordering a pizza. Listen to this. A major endorsement. Is there any chance that uh, someone ordered a pizza for us? Was that on our rider? What's that? Was did you get the? Was there pizza on the thing for us? So. He's announcing this to a dive bar in Calgary that never does live events. I mean, or wait, maybe it is a comedy club. But nobody comes to Calgary and starts demanding the things on their rider. And he starts asking the, he's on the stage, they're setting up. Um, did you get the pizza on our ride? And you can hear the guy go, what? And so Tony has to correct himself. You know, on the thing. What's that? Cheers. Was, did you get the, was there pizza on the thing for us? I can get you pizza. This gets yeah, so can good. you just order a large pepperoni, whatever your favorite pizza in town that delivers is? I'm stopping for a reason. I, 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 I want to feed this Eat to you this. slowly because this is so good. <laughs> whatever your best pizza in town is, order that. We want to try. We're new in town. I would do the same thing. When I came to cities, I didn't waste one meal. Of course. Whenever I came to a city, one of my favorite things to do when I go to a city is I want to eat the best food that that city has to offer. So I always ask, Naturally. what are the best places? Did you demand that anyone bring it to you? Never, ever, ever. And by the way, I don't want to eat while I'm setting up. I've got a show to do. The last thing I'm worried about is pizza. Who wants to waste one of their vacation meals just eating quickly pizza right before they have to go? and do a big show it's not even enjoyable you got a lot to worry about and so you've got, he's yelling out to the staff who's got other things to do they're not just standing there waiting to make pizzas for people so he yells at this guy get us the best pizza place now this gets so good watch this yeah can you just order a large pepperoni whatever your favorite pizza in town that delivers is sure all right great i can get it made here if you want we could make it here if you want, the guy says. And only the biggest asshole in the world. And me. I would do the same thing, too. But I wouldn't even 
bring up eating at the place that serves food. So let me explain to you what's going on. This place makes and sells pizza. They have a whole dinner menu. It's one of those huckster comedy clubs. I was very against this. One of the reasons my comedy club didn't work out is because my partner wanted to sell cheap frozen appetizers. You know, they wanted to go to Costco and buy a bunch of cheap frozen appetizers that we heat up for people and then charge 20 bucks. I said, absolutely no. My biggest rule ever, I wanted to open up a comedy club that serves no food on purpose. You know, every comedy club you go to makes you have a two item minimum. They can't force you to drink anymore because drinking is drugs, but they make you buy two items. So you'll have to buy a Coke and mozzarella sticks for $17.95, and they're the worst carnival circus sticks you've ever had. (laughs) I said, that is so shitty to do to somebody. I remember going to comedy clubs and sitting down after paying my $20 ticket and then going, what would you like to drink? And I go, I'm good. And they go, "Uh, it's a two drink minimum. And I would get furious because now I got to spend $19.79 to take two people out on a date to see comedy, it's a hundred bucks. I go, this is why people don't come out back then. They didn't come out to see comedy. It was too expensive. And by the way, should the comedian be doing their art while people shove fucking mozzarella sticks and ha 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 chos into their throats? Is there anything you think Michelangelo was painting David Da Vinci's fucking penis while a guy scarfed down tacos? It's rude. It's anti-art to eat frozen reheatables while somebody's doing their art. Okay? You're either doing art or mozzarella. So I said no. That was a big, big thing. Okay? No, but how are we going to make money? I don't know. We don't make money then. How about that? That'll get you booted from your own comedy club real quick when you don't want to make money. Now, Tony is demanding that the guy orders a pizza, but they're in the pizza business, this comedy (laughs) club. So listen to what happens. Oh, man, I just fucked that up. Old Michael David, fuck that up. Old Michael David, where were we, Jules? I think we were only at like five minutes. Don't worry, this is so good. I hope people are enjoying this still. I could watch this for ten hours. Okay, five minutes right around here. Yeah, here we go. Because you see the guy in the back. Okay, watch this shit. And that's like a a major endorsement. Is there any chance that uh, someone ordered a pizza for us? Was that on our rider? Even Red Band knows to stay out of this one. Did you get the, was there pizza on the thing for us? Can you get your pizza? Yeah, can you just order a large pepperoni, whatever your favorite pizza in town that delivers is? Sure. All right, great. Okay, so he says sure, and then Tony goes, all right, great. First of all, say thank you. I know. How shitty is that? All right, I would never, I'm the meanest guy. I treated the wait staff and all those people like gold. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You know, Tony screams and yells at the audio guys. Hey, audio guy! By the way, the audio guy does not like being called audio guy. Audio guy, will you fix this mic? Uh, You're in someone else's club. They've worked there full time. They don't even know you and you're coming and screaming at them. So he doesn't say thank you. This gets way worse. People don't know this about me. I'm actually um, historically polite. Like, I do the things society is your unless supposed to. Unless you fuck me. There is an unless. Me. Unless you <laughs> fuck me, then I start getting fisticuffy with the, with the manager of the restaurant. I'll push you. Uh, but they always but deserve yes, it. If you're doing your job, I treat you like gold. You should see how I treat customer service people. Hi, I'd like to make a return. You're great. Just kidding. I treat them like shit too, but he treats them like more shit. Watch this. Favorite pizza in town that delivers is. Sure. All right, great. I can get it made here if you want. Is it good here? Decent. Decent. (gasps) Oh my God. (laughs) This is really happening. He goes, I can make the pizza here for you if you want. And Tony goes, is it good here? Knowing that it's bad. And he goes, it's decent. And Tony goes, Decent. Now, these are all things that I would do, but I would also never demand that someone who sells pizza order me a pizza from a competing chain. That's crazy. Imagine I'm doing a live show with Domino's and I go, can you get me a Pizza Hut? And they go, we sell pizza here. And I go, I like Pizza Hut better, though. 
So this is really happening. <laughs> they say they make pizza, and Tony asks if it's any good. Meanwhile, this gets even better. Doing this stance, by the way. Look yes, at how he's Andy's standing. on stage. Hello. <laughs> You got to see this. Whatever your favorite pizza in town that delivers. There's a lot of rewinds. All right, great. I can get it made here if you want. Is it good here? Decent. Decent? We it's want, like, we want your the, favorite. It's the crust. We eat a lot of pizza. Oh, it's the crust. It's pretty good. Um, I can, I can we want your best. We eat a lot of pizza. See, Red Man is doing what I do when I'm out with Mike and he's mad. So... Uh, Tony's going, well, we want to. And then Red Band's And going, then Red Band's like this. Well, he's going, oh, Thin Crust sounds okay. Thin Crust sounds fine. Exactly. Cool. Well, because no one can be this big of an asshole. <laughs> now, listen, um, also, it's like the comedy clubs are so dirt poor. You don't understand. Like, every. After you do this comedy club business for so, much, so long, you realize there's no infinite money. Like, you're paying. You're barely breaking even with this comedy Every horseshit. Every restaurant. Well, more so comedy clubs because they're only open at night on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Okay? At the most. And then they have two shows. So they got to make a week's worth of income all in these nights, buying people pizzas every week. It, it, especially when you make pizza there, you're going, I can't send my employees out to go get pizza. We make it here. Let's Can't make it. Can't Joelberg just use his phone and call a pizza place? Exactly. Like all this time, Tony's. And by the way, you've been playing pool for an hour. <laughs> you could pick up your own phone and order your own pizza. It's so douchey. You're not Dave Chappelle. You could order your own pizza at a Tony Hinchcliffe. But if they can't boss size people career. around and act like big shots, why are they even doing this? Somebody says, "Plus, it's pizza. Who gives a shit?" I disagree. I would never eat comedy club pizza. That's disgusting. But I'm like, you would figure out your own plan. To me, I, I mean, oh, oh, of course. I and by <laughs> the way, I would again, I would never be eating at the club. These things don't mix in my mind. This gets worse. I can get it made here if you want. Is it good here? Decent. Decent? We it's want, like, we want your the, favorite. It's the crust. We eat a lot of pizza. Oh, it's the crust. It's pretty good. Um, I, can, I can have as many pizzas as you want made here. Yeah. You, want a thin, you want this place's thin crust? Or then the... he puts it on Brian. And by the way, this guy sucks. Like, obviously, they want a real pizza. Stop <laughs> suggesting that they should eat your club pizza. You're obviously putting the man in a really bad place. So Tony puts it off on Red Band and goes, do you want one of their pizzas? <laughs> Red Band, you're the final decider. Red Band's like, ah, I'm too dumb to be involved. Watch this. I have as many pizzas as you want made here. Yeah. You, want a thin, you want this place's thin crust or the best place? I mean, it's, it's up to you. Yeah, I can, get you, you, I can get you one of everything we make. I think they got like four or five. Different ones. I think it's probably All right, five. let's do that. We'll do that. You want that for now? Yeah, we'll try that out. Oh, he's so mad. Okay, let's do that. We'll try that out. I can get you one of everything they make. Look, he hangs his head thinking, surely these clear signs of disgust will get through to this idiot's head. <laughs> Look at this. So they got to eat the shitty microwaved comedy club pizza. What? Yikes. Not since prison have I had a pie that bad. <laughs> And that's the scene. These people pay oh money for a ticket. God, then it cuts to this gambling addict's corner. I didn't realize it. Look at this. Then it cut. Look, this is what's happening in the lobby. Seven depressed, wifeless men stew over their gambling addiction oh, yeah, at I these forgot. digital poker machines. They have these at like every bar because yeah. it's not illegal. We don't Canada. have these in the States really, but in Canada, gambling is legal. So at all the bars, they have digital poker. And what does digital poker attract? Terrible dads <laughs> that have all, every one of these men has two kids that are getting Chia Pets for Christmas this year. <laughs> That's it. Guys. That's Whatever good. they sell at the Walgreens checkout aisle is what their kids are getting for Christmas. Those are some creeps with kids. Look at those guys. I'm going to take you down to the <laughs> creeps with kids. I'm going to get... And they're not winning. What are you going to win out of this? Five bucks? You're Look at the despair. And ever. each one of these guys is a sandy-eyed trash dad. <laughs> I've met many men like this in Dearborn, Michigan. These people... Pay money for a ticket to see a show. 
I know that if I paid money for a show, you know, and was gonna be stuck in a seat for two hours, I'd want Another it to be miss. damn good. Especially if I was uh, gonna go back to it after seeing it once before. So, that's why it's important to figure out how to make these moments and, um, Listen to this. you know, just make it so that people are like, my God, I can't miss whatever's going to happen next. And then he takes a pool shot. Look at this. A oh. huge miss. Tony kind of does before shows. He checks with the bartenders or the staff to check. On so here's where it gets ridiculous. Tony is sitting there allowing Jeremiah to act so sincere while telling this story. Look at these two complete A's. Local references and kind of explore what's been going on in the areas that we are visiting to kind of get a pulse and a gauge on what's going on currently. A pulse. A pulse and a gauge on what's going on. This is the silliest, <laughs> easiest to do show. They sit up there and bomb for an hour. Anyone could, you don't even have to be aware to do this show. You just go, ha ha. Another name out of the bucket, another 60 seconds. And they don't get the pulse on the city. I Their Calgary yeah. episode was completely I'm off. literally Nobody about to. Nobody from Canada would think anything they said is funny. I had an idea a few weeks ago called, I'm going to put on a show called Kill Tani. Yes. T-O-N-N-Y. Where I do the same show and show you how easy this is to do. I could throw together this show in an instant. And do it better than the Tawny Hinchcliffe has ever thought of doing. Watch this. To kind of get a pulse and a gauge on what's going on currently. I'm looking for only references that everybody in the audience will know. Wow. So like, what's going on here in Calgary? So let's talk about it. What's the gay part of town? Well, there it is again. Look, 1.5 hours to showtime. <laughs> so are you mocking their show? It's not a real show. There is a show that's starting in 1.5 hours. It's not showtime. Ashley Butterfield was like, the show is about to begin. Yeah, the <laughs> show. So you're <laughs> mocking these people? Look at these assholes. Tony Hinchcliffe is the S&M queen. Or gay street. The mo I mean, and by I'm, I'm asking for what, what is the most iconic part that everybody will know? It's the bar? Yeah. What about street area? It, we don't have a gay street. Twisted Elements, the most So he's famous. trying to ask before every show, he asks the people who work there, what are the Calgary big things that I could bring up? That shouldn't count. By the way, you're supposed to be this funny, worldly travel traveler. So all of the jokes he's going to make, he gets 10 minutes before the show from the bar staff. Hey, what are the things that people hate in Calgary? Because I want to pander to the audience. And they're like, uh, well, here in Calgary, we have a stampede. That's kind of goofy with cowboy hats. Got it. Thanks. And then he'll take all the credit for making a joke about that very thing when the show starts. And no, no, no. You, a little you should credit the waiters yeah. and the people who work at the bar because you're getting all your jokes from them. And then you're talking about it in the doc as if that's serious research. No, you're asking some pizza boy what you should be talking about during the show. That's horrible. Miss one. Chris. Gonna bring out the angry twisted element bear. That's funny. Oh, Kensington. Why does that ring a bell? Okay, y'all, yeah, save that for hipsters. Give me more. Kensington is hipsters. Kensington. Okay. Are you are you crediting these writers? So all your hilarious pandering moments for these live events are all created by the bus boy. Got it. That's cool. So every time you think Tony's quick-witted, well, no, no, no. We just interviewed the uh, the guy who cleans up the cups right before the show. And, and that guy doesn't know anything also. Yeah, he don't know. <laughs> he don't fucking know. If anyone who knows anything is not in this room, they are far away. They're working at Model Milk, making a beautiful ribeye. <laughs> They're not here. Okay, let me ask you this. Uh, what is the ethnicities of the people that live here? White, 90%? Yeah. And then what's 10%? Asian. Asian. What kind of Asian? Like Chinese. Chinese? Yeah. Chinese and East Indian. And he's showing this off as if we should congratulate him for this. Wow, you really put in the effort. Three minutes before the show, you ask a series of two questions. 
Whoa, you really care about the content. Why are there East Indians here? Are there igloos out here? No. Um, so it's an oil town. Our chat is starting to light up. Tony, I want you to know this. Here's a guy. Oh, this is so gross, he says, about your doc. Here's another one. Uh, the dude is a retard. Another person says, you're shameful. What do you think about that? These are the people. They hate you. Look at this coyote mustache you've grown. How dare you? Everything you do is a dare on our people. How dare you? Do you this? watched this back so many times. Are you triple dog daring our country, our nation with this shit? You need to be dunked. This is like the Texas of Canada, right? Everybody's got a truck. Everybody's manly. They're all tough out here. Um, and what else? What else about Calgary, guys? Who's wow. the new prime minister? Justin Trudeau. That's so you right. don't know anything, <laughs> but you take Justin all the... Trudeau. And now he's going to rattle these things off, and everyone's going to go, Oh, the wonderful Tony Hinchcliffe, he's so quick-witted. He even knows stuff about other territories, like Alberta. He, by the way, and anyone in Canada knows this. He goes, hey, everybody, we're in Calgary, Canada. That would be like saying, hey, everybody, we're in Illinois, United States. Or Chicago, United States. Chic hey, everybody, we're in Chicago, United States. Come on down. No, no, no. It's Calgary, Alberta. Listen, I don't want to say Alberta either. It's a disgusting name for the region. But no one calls it Calgary, Canada. All right, Canada, you know what I'm talking about, right? Exactly. So I know more about these continents than you. Right. Really? I thought everyone liked that guy. Look, they're all saying I'm 100%. sports team is the Calgary Flames? Look at this. You don't even know the sports team of the city? I mean, really, you, you see that 100 times while rolling in. And There's no he other sports here, right? Just Google this, but he wants to like, yes. show off to the waiter. Yeah. That's the thing. You could Google all this. He wants the waiter to see him in his process. Yeah, and by the way, the waiter's got a million things to do to get this club up and running. It's not like they have a separate position for everybody. The waiter is probably also the talent booker and the cleaner and the guy who does the mics. Uh, once a year in July for two weeks, the entire city shuts down and gets wasted. Really? What's that called? The Calgary Stampede. You don't know the about Calgary the Calgary Stampede? Stampede? I did know about you? that. Oh. Ari Shafir once tried to bring me up here for that. Yeah, yeah, oh, cool. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. this girl got double teamed at the Stampede, and now she's, like, locally cable. famous. She lost her job. Uh -oh. Pot's legal He's now. He's eating the pizza. <laughs> and believe me, the pizza's awful. Any food made at a comedy club is the worst food. I'd rather eat a cafeteria from a high school right oh Every look at that pizza did you see that pizza they showed it legal oh. now it's a grandma pie right now we all know so much about pizza because of dave portney but before that we knew it from ourselves everybody including me you them and her knows about pizza this pizza looks disgusting. There's a balsamic drizzle. Any, you don't like that. I don't like a drizzle of any sort uh, on my pizza. It's a grandma pie. It's cut in squares. That's bad. Everywhere in Canada now? It's a um, flatbread, someone said. Okay, so that's Calgary. Okay, Joel is practicing his drums on the stool. Is that that's going to make his drumming any better? Here we go, folks. One of the reasons why I don't think it became a, a Netflix show or a TV show uh -oh. is that you can't really describe Kill Tony in like one sentence. Holy fuck! One thing I, uh, one of the reasons why you don't see Kill Tony on TV is you can't really describe Kill Tony in one sentence. It's too complex. Comedians come on stage and then you roast them. Wow. American Idol, but with comedians. That was a sentence fragment. Yeah, the <laughs> mighty Brian Rudband, Jeremiah Wonkers, and you are just too complex for the mainstream mind. Did you hear this shit? This is why I don't think it became a... Oh, oh, by the way, our chat is lit up like the 3rd of July. <laughs> Fuck you, Tony. No, no, no. It's very simple. You can. It sucks. Fuck you. Oh, my God. They hate you. Now... <laughs> 
My chat has a hundred comments right now screaming. Your YouTube page has zero con uh, comments screaming. That's how deluded and crazy they've become. Listen. One of the reasons why I don't think it became a, a Netflix show or a TV show is that you can't really describe Kill Tony in like one sentence. Gosh. Like there is no one line that describes Kill Tony. It's such a multifaceted, wow. extreme comedy show. And one of the reasons why, you know, without a doubt, is the fact that sometimes it's not a comedy show. Sometimes. And he's leaning down to break a set of pool balls. Why he says this. Is this not the worst? You would think you would think comedians would know you can't say this. This is how astray they've become. Where this is actually coming out of their mouth. You used to have like this mental barrier that would prevent even the richest, fanciest comedian wouldn't say this, knowing he'd be strung up and uh, uh what do they call it? where they noose a for a, a lynching. A lynching. <laughs> You'd be lynched. If you said something like this, so today's comedy community is so ass backwards that this is coming out of comedians' mouths. Joe Rogan, does Joe, this is what I mean. Has Joe Rogan sat down and watched any of this? If I presented this to Joe Rogan, wouldn't he go, oh no, you're so right. This is so crazy. Doesn't he come from that world? Isn't that why we first started liking him? Why is Joe allowing his friends to do this? It's a very serious very weird. show with a lot of laughter mixed in. And back to the line. But yeah, giving these people a chance to, you know, show off a talent that they have or have their first kiss or oh my. things like that. Oh my okay, God. wait. Oh my God. Tony now <laughs> is expanding his thoughts on the ever so important Kill Tony show. You know, it's not just about us. We're giving people a chance to really showcase their talents. And then, yeah, sure. And then he leans on the little uh, pool table shelf to show that he's really thinking about this. Look at this again. This gets worse. These people a chance to, you know, show off a talent that they have or have their first kiss or... Look at this Things lead. like that. Oh, shit. He's not it's just playing like pool. I always ask myself, what if I was pulled out of that bucket, whether it's year one, year two, three, four, five, six, what would I want to happen to me if I did good? Oh, my God. Look at this walking shot. He's walk he has no business walking through the kitchen, but he told the cameraman, get a shot following me, tracking me, in fact, through the kitchen. They've done this in casino. They've done this in... Good fellas, so I want that shot of me going through the kitchen. See, I come in the back. You know, the people mostly come through the front door. We're so in with the club, we come through the back door. Remember this shit? And if I did bad, what would I expect that the worst that could happen would be? You have and no business in the kitchen. And, you know, they don't want you in there. These moments of Even the club guys are like, why is the comic in the kitchen? This is where we work. Why is the comic in the kitchen? The comics don't need to be through all of our back doors and shit. If you put yourself in position to do it, you can make almost anything happen. Um, and I feed off of that. Whoa! I feed off of the energy of people around me. He feeds off the energy, okay. Look at this historic. And he thinks he looks, oh yeah. So he's actually doing this. He set this up as if the show is going to start right as he did his epic cool guy walk through the kitchen. Now, this never happens, but he's timed this out perfectly to show you. Oh, yeah, all that walking I was doing, it's because I'm about to pop up on stage. Here it comes. My shmi. Hey, this is Red Band coming to you live from There's Calgary for a brand new episode of Kill Tony. Give it up for Tony Hinchcliffe. Uh, look at this. He wanted that what? One shot. Yeah. Oh, well, I missed him walking on. That's amazing. You better lose yourself in the music the moment you own it. You better never let it go. Whoa, you only got one pizza. <laughs> 
Look at this asshole. If you don't mind, I'm going to smoke some shmi. It's time for a shmi break. Here we go. Do I have a smoking shmi kind of song here? Let's see. Here he is, and uh, walking up to the room. This is where the real shit goes down. He's wearing his represent hoodie. You know, he wears represent clothing. He's got this little windbreaker, some cheap $28 windbreaker that says represent. And I was going crazy trying to find out what is represent. Why does he wear this clothing brand all the time? It turns out it's his buddy from Joe Rogan. He met him at the UFC once. It's Nick Diaz's company, a MMA fella. Oh. oh, I love Diaz. I love El Sanjos. I love Garcia. Oh, I love the boxing. But he has a clothing brand called Rep Resent. It's a very low-end clothing brand, and Tony wears it all the time. And someone said in the comments, I agree with this. They go, he wears it because that's what he does, bro. <laughs> Represent, yeah, that pretty much uh, sums up everything I live by. Yeah, I represent myself. I uh, I say represent when I'm in the room. I represent the uh, the East Coast. I'm a East Coast Italian ball buster. <laughs> yeah, right. That logo sucks. Here he comes, the beautiful Tony Hinchcliffe. I mean, the truth is, is that. The minute's one thing, but the interview's really the most important part of the whole thing. Oh. People being honest, being vulnerable, staying hilarious. You know, you can have 60 seconds of good material, but we really find out the real meat and potatoes about you in the, um, in the interview part. You mean the interview part where you go, what are your hobbies? Oh, yeah? Great. Well, there you go. That's not good. Sorry. He really thinks he's like Howard Stern when Howard Stern gets a celebrity to really open up. He envisions himself as one of the world's greatest interviewers, really allowing these people to say the things that they normally wouldn't say in any old interview. But with him, he cracks their code. And why did he say that in such a slow a down pontificating no idea what voice? I'm at. Because he's like a he's, fucking asshole. Like, cuff. look at the look at his eyes. Yes. It's like, are you kidding me? He's the worst person we've ever shown you on this show. <laughs> it gets worse. The real meat and potatoes about you in the um, in the interview part. It's, it's a tough position because they have <laughs> no idea what I'm going to ask. What? Oh. Yeah, they actually do if they've ever watched. Where are you from? What are your hobbies? What do you do when you're not doing this? Do you have a That's girlfriend? It. These are the. Mo I mean, he's literally one bad question away from. Oh yeah, what's your favorite color? Got any favorite movies? These aren't deep questions. <laughs> We've all seen the. Sh I've seen every fucking episode. That's the the thing I rule over all these guys. Even if they wanted to come back and try to do an episode about me, have you watched all 15 years of Red Bar? Because I've watched years upon years. You know, with Joey Diaz, the reason these guys are so shell-shocked, yeah, I've been watching Joey Diaz for seven years. <laughs> I've seen every appearance of his on Joe Rogan. I know what he's going to say next. They don't know nothing about me. They don't do know a diddly squat. He's a failed comic. Good one. So, uh, yeah, that's uh, where we could really kill these guys. I just realized my power. I actually do know everything about them. I'm obsessed. <laughs> I'm sick. You can't compete with my sickness. No one can. And, uh... <laughs> and, uh... You know, even everybody that's ever won a golden ticket, they don't win it with the 60 seconds. Ah. You have to be a well-rounded, not just performer, but also improviser and just human. Wow, I just realized that is my superpower. I'm a superhero. No one could do Red Bar. No one could ever give up their life to watch as much Fool's content as we've no. seen and as we're going to see. There is not a man who will do it. You literally have to... There's no more playing basketball. There's no more going to church. There's no more meetups. You sit and you watch. And when that's over, you watch another tape. And they're long. Some of them are three hours. And you watch all of it. Ours are even And then longer. after you watch all the... Real stuff, then you got to watch their Instagram stories, see every picture of them, read every tweet. It's 
Yes, you're so fucked. You got the worst guy ever attached to all this. There's no other person. It's the perfect storm. That's why every comeback against you is always the most basic. It's not. That, I mean, it's not that you would have of. to. They would have to give up their literal existence to catch up with me, <laughs> and it's never going to happen. Here we go. You have to be a great guest on the podcast, not just a great comedian for a minute. Get out of there. Wow. <laughs> he misses a pool shot. And this is how you know the documentary guys are more interested in making it look and sound like a doc. See, they fucked him. Now, he's feeding into it, too, but the doc guys are like, we're making a real doc. This is a real film. Tony just misses a shot, and he's got to let the audience know that he missed it. Oh, get the fuck out of here. Come on. I always sink those. Get out of there. How long you been doing stand-up? Okay, we could skip this. This is him doing... But you should watch all this on your own. We'll go back. This gets, in fact, worse. Trust me. Oh, I just remembered one part at the end. Okay. Yeah, I know. That's really bad, huh? Wait the till you stand. see how. Yep. Oh, yeah. You're going to see the stand, do we call it? <laughs> okay. This is not a comedy club in New York operated by Big J Okerson. It is a move by Tony Hinchcliffe. The stand. <laughs> Coming up. Sam Walker was up first. It was a great okay, performance. Wait. This is a little Hilaria. explaining. That guy came on stage and then he did a good job, I guess. And then yeah. Tony offered to, oh, for him okay. to open for him. So yeah, this guy comes on stage. Here, I'll show you this motherfucker, this fake Sam Hyde. Now he's terrible, but what Tony likes to do, and you've seen this if you watched Kill Tony, Tony will flex his gatekeeping power by offering one of the shitty open mic schlubs a spot on his very own stand-up show. Now, you might think, wow, Tony is really helping the young comics. So what Tony will do is, if you're good enough and they don't even know I'm going to do this, but if they blow the, my socks off, I'm going to let them open for me at my next show. Now, everyone's like, whoa, Tony must really see something in this comic. First of all, he doesn't. He's just trying to flex that power. Second, then Tony doesn't have to pay an opener he doesn't have to pick an opener he just has to he gets the credit for giving someone their comedy career but then this poor fuck has to open for tony for no money tomorrow night bomb and that way tony could come up and go not everyone has what it takes get ready folks it's me <laughs> finally the real entertainment has arrived so it's actually shitty you should be bringing a, a real opener you know who should be upset about this the people who pay tickets to your comedy show. So this is what you don't know. While he's in Calgary doing the Kill Tony experience, so you buy a ticket to this for 60 bucks, and then guess what? Right afterwards, Tony does stand-up solo for an hour, which you have to buy another ticket to. So it's not two for the price of one. It's two separate shows. You want to come to Kill Tony? 60 bucks. You want to see me afterwards? 60 and they do. They want to see both shows. So he gets to do basically two shows for one. And then they sit there and they go, oh, this sucks. They have to watch Tony alone. And the opener is the guy that they just picked out of the crowd. <laughs> watch that this. That was awesome. There you go. Tomorrow night, that guy will have a new biggest credit. <laughs> wow. Tomorrow night, that guy will have a new biggest credit because he offered that Sam Hyde guy a, a spot on the show. <laughs> Look at how happy he is. He's so be happy to be a gatekeeper. Maker. A lot of people, uh, you do the right things and I'll notice you. Sam Walker was up first. It was a great performance, hilarious, and he stayed in character. Um, and I could tell that he was a real comedy vet from doing this so often. It was clear as day, absolutely hilarious. It was horrible. And then during the interview part, I'm finding out, you know, is there anything that I'm missing here? Is there a, a you know, just trying to make sure that there's not a catch to something. Like, you know, if the guy's a piece of shit, I'm not gonna give him that opening spot. It's Ooh. not that interesting of a story, Ooh. you know? You wanna make the audience want something good to happen oh. to this guy. 
without them knowing that that's what you're doing. You know, they didn't know that I was casting the opening spot for my weekend shows. Whoa! Sorry. <laughs> the audience had no idea what I was up to. Do you hear yourself? Look Man. at that. He's wearing a guy's XXS coat. <laughs> Look at this. Like, really focus on the size of the coat. Like, with your mind, take it off of him and lay it down flat on the table. Yeah. And then imagine how small it is. That it's like is a tiny outfit. I mean, your pool cue shouldn't be uh, scarier than the guy. That's not a thing that happens all the time. But it happened this time. And that's that. That's a big like what what Sam did Jeremiah. is what Sam did kind of shows you what is possible with the show if somebody take is takes advantage of their one minute because <laughs> there's a lot of people who will go up in the show they're like oh I didn't know I was gonna be called or they're not ready and then they don't get anything out of it because they didn't put the work into it. Wow. Okay, now it's a montage of heck, and um, they're showing a bunch of guys going up there and killing. We've seen this from the Calgary episode. Here's where, <laughs> and this is uh, this is uh, our finale here tonight with Tony Hinchcliffe. You're gonna see the stand. It's a new move by Tony Hinchcliffe. We've actually this is the best part of the doc. We didn't know what it was like after the show ends. You no. know, when Kill Tony ends, we see them take that picture and they're drawing the show with Michael Palace wine or something. Uh, but we don't know how he acts after the show. We're going to get a glimpse into that. <laughs> We're also going to see how Jeremiah acts after the show. Tony's going to do the stand. Jeremiah's going to do something that's going to blow your socks off. Watch this. Man. Oh, yeah. Well, the people who do well in the show get rewarded handsomely for it. Wow. And the way we kind of look at the meet and greet is the show's not done until everybody's out of the door. Oh, wow. They really care about their audience. Listen to this. Jeremiah has uh, fastened this stupid idea together. The show isn't done till the last person's out of the door. Now, wait till you hear why the show isn't done. Till they've squeezed every bit of attention possible. Well, you're going to see this is a little different for Jeremiah. Jeremiah's got his own reason why the show doesn't end until everyone's out the door. Listen to this. I stay in character sometimes during the meet and greet. I think some people like it. Some people might be weirded out by it. I don't know. I stay in character during the meet and greet. Do you know... How horrible that would be. So Jeremiah plays different characters every week in the band. So let's pretend uh, one week he's a billionaire. You know, he's done this where he plays a billionaire in the band. That's the thing. Of course. So imagine after the show ends, you're like, Jeremiah, that was great. And he's like, who are you? I'm a billionaire. And you're like, <laughs> uh, is Jeremiah in there? Can I talk to him? Oh, uh, you've got Benny the billionaire. I'm sorry. Imagine that now. He is not doing that for the reason he says, we, oh, the show doesn't end until everyone's out the door. Yeah, right. You're too scared to be yourself. You always have. We've been telling this about you this whole time. So you stay in character to hide your true self. It's like a mental crazy person's thing. Watch this again. Sometimes they it are. makes me more comfortable to just stay in character. There it is. Sometimes it makes me more comfortable to stay in character. Oh, I bet it does. Then you don't have to be your real kooky, disgusting self. Even Tim Dillon was on his show last week, and he posted it as if it was some kind of roast. No, Tim Dillon was being serious. He said, you're some kind of psycho. I bet you guys eat like uh, Stouffer's steak dinners. You and your wife sit quietly and cut... Yeah, like two fucking weird, psychotic people. But also, I thought that was a little hypocritical because Tim was shitting on Jeremiah's wigs and characters, but Tim loves putting on wigs and doing characters. Yeah, that's true. So, well, who are you to talk? He loves it when he does it. All right, uh, there's more. You're about to see what's called The Stand. Once I'm locked in, it's easier for me to, after everybody leaves, get out of the character rather than like staying in costume and then be like, oh, hi, I'm Jeremiah, even though I'm wearing all this Prince They garb. would get it. They would so, understand, you asshole. I think there's kind of a buzzing energy until 
everybody's out that door and then we can finally relax and that's why we like to play pool and unwind like oh! this after the shows. That's why we like to play pool and unwind, unlike <laughs> the rest of the people of the earth. Listen to this. Here it comes. There he is. Lovely. Welcome to the fray, my so, friend. Oh, cool. Thanks, Daddy. It's just, it's just me, you, and him tomorrow night, dude. It's an honor. It's an honor. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, the stand. Tony is physically standing. <laughs> it's time to experience his height in real time. Here is Jeremiah Wonders, who is about 5'8". You can see Tony Hinchcliffe, the shortest of the group. This is the stand, and such an awkward thing is about to happen. Here is the Sam Hyde wannabe that won opening for Tony. Remember, Tony's gift to him was that he gets to open for Tony for free tomorrow to warm up the crowd so that Tony doesn't have to pay anybody to do that. Wait till you see how Tony treats these people after the show. Welcome to the stand. Welcome to the fray, my Tony. friend. Oh, cool. Thanks, Daddy. It's just, it's just me, you, and him tomorrow night, dude. It's an honor. Yeah, honor. Thank you so much, okay, yeah, so, so, I was uh, probably the biggest set of my life thus far. Yeah. Oh, cool. Absolutely. Thanks a lot for the opportunity. The next two biggest ones are tomorrow night. I'll be ready. This guy goes, tonight was like the biggest set of my life. It was amazing. And Tony goes, absolutely. Well, the next biggest set of your life is tomorrow opening for me here. Jeremiah is still in character acting as the prince. <laughs> While they have this important discussion, this poor guy doesn't know this isn't how comedy works. No other comedian would talk to you this way. No one would, you know, <laughs> but he don't know any different because he's from Calgary. Here. The next two biggest like, ones are tomorrow night. Classic. I'll be ready, Let's man. Let's go. Can go home. You're part of uh, the Calgary yes. Kill Tony documentary. You didn't even know that, but you got that going on. This is a quadruple hit for you tonight. I'll take it. You, got, much you, time? Got you didn't even know we were filming a documentary. This is a quadruple hit for you tonight. So not only are you in a doc, you get to open for me. You went up tonight and you're talking to me now. It's a quadruple amazing night for you. Imagine saying this is, eh, that's okay. I'll kind of figure out for myself what's my best night. But this guy's just Tony is like telling him that this is the best night of his life. A quadruple amazing night. <laughs> you got that going on? This is a quadruple hit for you tonight. I'll take it. You got, you got four gigs for signing up for one show. You got four gigs just for signing up for one show. I still don't know the four. And look at Prince Harry over there. Look at Tony's stare. Like, imagine looking right into those eyes. And he only will talk to you if Jeremiah is standing as guard yeah. next to you. Look at this. And this guy, at this height, you should never be talking to someone that short. This guy's, uh, Tony's looking at this guy as his second guard. Anyone that's taller than me, I write them a note and I have a good friend to give it to them if I want to speak to them. <laughs> you never talk to someone taller than you. It's rude. Powerful. Thanks, so. That's what all the hard work and fucking preparation and natural talent, that's what it gets you. Success. That's right. <laughs> when preparation meets all- Oh my God, and then he talks to them like dogs. What does that get for you at the end of the night? And he's doing the stand, remember. So tell me now, repeat after me what I just told you and why this is so great. Uh, success and I should listen to you and- Exactly right. That's exactly what I said. I hope you have that memory cap on for tomorrow. Look at this way of speaking to someone. You are no better than the fake Sam Hyde. Powerful. Thanks, so. That's what all the hard Thanks, work and fucking preparation and natural talent, that's what it gets you. Success. That's right. <laughs> when preparation meets opportunity. You're goddamn Success. motherfucking right. Macho man. You're goddamn fucking right. Thanks, Daddy. And then he looks at the camera nervously. This Your part goddamn made me fucking realize... success and hard work got you to meet me, didn't it? That Tony yes, please, is Tony. Even worse than we thought he was. Yeah, oh, this is a hundred times worse. People in the chat are going, "This is insane." Now, do you understand why? When this was released a week and a half ago, I was going, "Why isn't this on the front page of every cringe Reddit? <laughs> why aren't there people? Memeology one hundred and one should be showing you this." But no, nobody said a peep. Goddamn Success. motherfucking right. Macho man. You're goddamn fucking right. Thanks, Daddy. I you appreciate did it. that. Absolutely. Um, I'll see you tomorrow. Seven and ten tomorrow night. What's oh my for you? God, Bye. he's gonna do two shows. A guy 
He's never done any comedy. Now he's got to open a 7 p.m. show and a 10 p.m. show in front of a full 300-seat crowd <laughs> where Tony is sitting off stage going, you better not mess this up. You're not ready for that, nor should you. And look at, even uh, Joel is like, oh, fuck, this guy's fucked. Red Band can't look anyone in the eye. He's going, <laughs> hey, Tony's doing it again, isn't he? <laughs> Jeremiah's pleased because he's panicking in his own mind. Now watch this. Uh, this guy goes, Tony, don't worry. I will prepare. I will follow all your rules. And then Joel Berg butts and he goes, you don't actually have to, don't. Because he realizes like no, how intense. Dare. No, watch. That happens. Watch oh. this. Absolutely. Um, I'll see you tomorrow. Seven much... and ten tomorrow night. <laughs> What's better for you? Five or ten? Ten, please. Let's do ten. That'd be amazing. Dude, yeah, dude. thank you so much. Oh, that, yeah. was, uh, that was watch awesome. This. Yeah, nice to meet you, man. You gotta get the party yeah. started. It might be weird in the opening, opening, opening spot, but you can get him. Don't right? worry, man. I'm ready okay. to uh, right. ready to throw down. Right. You'll be bringing up Jeremiah Watkins. You can research his Jeremiah? credits in the meanwhile. Watch us. I'll see you guys tomorrow. He's the leader of the band for the podcast, Bill so Tony. Yeah, Roast nice battle. He's got his own hit podcast called Jeremiah Wonders. You gotta bring him up, dude. You're not bringing me up. He's bringing me up. But you gotta. Oh my <laughs> God! Wait a minute. This is like worse than I remember. He's walking around. Hey, thanks. Nice to meet. And he's like Jeremiah Wonders, lead singer of the band, <laughs> podcaster. You're bringing him up. You're not bringing me up. You haven't gotten there yet. You're bringing he up, him up, and he brings me up. And this guy's like, uh, Am I supposed to be taking notes on all this shit? Like, it's crazy. <laughs> Look at this. And wait, it gets worse. This is the part I'm talking about. This gets crazy. For the Congrats podcast to killed Tony, so yeah. Roast yeah. Battle. He's got his own hit podcast called Jeremiah Wonders. You got to bring him up. I, 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 wait, yeah. I just got to tell you, our chat is lighting up yeah. like a gun battle. Uh, this is beyond psychotic. <laughs> Cringe, they're yelling. They're screaming. Every bad thing you can think of hearing, they're screaming. <laughs> okay? But wait, there's a worse part. It gets worse. Yeah. See you guys tomorrow. He's the leader Congrats of the that. band for the Congrats podcast to killed Tony, so yeah. Roast yeah. Battle. Got his own hit podcast called Jeremiah Wonders. You got to bring him up, dude. You're not bringing me up. He's bringing me up. But you got to bring him up, and you got to do it we good. Do piggyback style. Okay, piggyback. I got you. I'll be. Uh, I'll do my homework. I'll be ready. I love it. Gotcha. Rock and roll. Yeah. Sam like no, Thank you, dude. No homework. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, just like I said. Like I said. He goes. Well, that sounds like a lot to do. I'll do my homework, and he's scared shitless. And then Jeremiah Brian, goes, you don't have to. There's no homework actually. Tony's just fucking crazy. You I see mean, that? how could you not panic? Well, yeah, to Tony, I mean, look how he's... So and you gotta intense. see the stand. Remember, he's standing... And there's even a part... I want to back it and up And his further. eyes are, like, demonic. Like, he should be an actor. Here's this part. <laughs> and I'm backing this up. Hopefully, I'll catch it again. When he starts shaking their hands, Tony goes... <sighs> as if... Okay, okay, he's not... Uh, it's not the queen we're meeting. Move along. As if not to shake his hand, as if he's not one of them. Why? You, uh, right. ready to throw down. Right. You'll be bringing up Jeremiah Watkins. You can research his Jeremiah? credits in the meanwhile. I'll okay. see you guys tomorrow. He's the yeah, leader of the band for the podcast, Bill Tony. So I might have missed yeah, it. Rose yeah, Battle. He's got his own hit podcast called Jeremiah Wonders. You got to bring him up, dude. You're not bringing me up. He's bringing me up. But you got to bring him up, and you got to do it we good. Do piggyback style. Okay, piggyback. I got you. I'll be, uh... I'll do Look my homework. This. I'll be ready. I love it. Rock and roll, yeah. Sam like Walker. No homework. Thank you, dude. No Thank homework. You. Yeah, yeah, just like, like I said, like I said, way, like I said during the show, if it wasn't for a couple people in episode being badass veterans and fucking, you know. Not looking at it like, oh, this is for first timers and open micers, but you look yeah. at, it, you treated it like, holy shit, I can kill so hard that I can. One minute, man. That was right. That That's was intense. And look what you did. Wow. Also, I just All noticed of you, right, Tony? that Tony is wearing a full collared shirt under his Oh, hoodie. yeah, and eight layers of windbreaking material. There's no wind, sir! You're inside! <laughs> Maybe you have to wear that around all of Brian Redband's farts. Get it? He's breaking wind. I'm wearing a windbreaker, for God's sake. I'll put that in my act. Let's see the ending. Yeah, I just wanted to, to try to do something that would be a, a good example of my comedy in one minute. Try to, to really boil that down. So I chose just that, that stuff. I really like this. And then he's uh, making even the people. He's like, tell us from your heart and soul what this show did to you. Again, it's not American Idol. It's not The Bachelor. Your life hasn't been changed. And he's making these poor saps. Oh, wait. 
We got the fake Sam Hyde, this dummy who's scared shitless. Let's hear what he says. Coming up. Podcast, like, uh, He's uh, coming up next. Things is just hearing what other cities, like comedians, are talking about and what they think is like important to do on state. I think it's a good uh, resource, not to copy, but to go to other directions. Shut up! You're yeah, wearing I'm, a I'm Sonic gonna, shirt, yeah. for God's sake. I'm glad sakes. I paid for a ticket and it paid off. Shut up! Here it comes. That was uh, probably the hottest minute of comedy I've ever done. <laughs> uh, all day, I was going over in my head, if I got the opportunity, what was I going to do? Listen to the music. And it basically came down to do my regular opening and just see how far I can go in a minute. See how many jokes I can get in. How has he convinced all these people to feel this way? So he puts out this air and they all fall for it. Like the Pied Piper. How do you get a guy like this to start feel? oh my God, oh my God, I'm just so humbled by this experience. Because it's so Kill Tony Calgary. It's not even Kill Tony at the comedy store in front of the other comedians. It's the Calgary Laugh Stop Show. This is the best This is have. not a big break. The gold standard is four LPMs, last per minute. Wow. And that was what I wanted, was get four in a minute. The biggest thing was people knew my name when it got called. That was a huge deal for me, is people that have been coming to the shows. I've been doing guest spots here for the last five years. We got to get this guy on the show and unwind him. This is a victim. This is a victim. Yeah, this guy's locked up by Tony's ways. We got to unlock this guy up. Uh, Look at his sorry set. And people have slowly been getting a, a taste. I never this is how Sam Hyde got his start. This is, uh, I feel like we're in the show Devs, and I've gone back to when Sam Hyde first got his start in comedy. <laughs> That's what we're watching right now. More than like five minutes. It's not a tape, deal, it's reality. It doesn't matter. I like to keep it tight and just hit him hard. Boom, boom, boom. No, no dead air kind of deal. They recognized me and remembered me, and it's just okay. uh, the fact that that's going to be on the internet for the rest of my life. No I'm one's going to see it. Pleased about that. That's a huge thirty-seven thousand views deal. tops. So, day at a time. I'm ready for tomorrow. The opportunity for to be in Calgary and do it. I had people contact me from across Canada, okay. saying, "All right, let's uh, see if Tony has any final words here." Oh God, the stand is back. Let's see. To put my hat in the bucket and wow, they're showing the bucket. Four shows for this, uh, the rest of this week. Yeah, that's what I Tony to told you. Give me ten minutes too, so I'm gonna. Tony has already forgotten your first and thing. last name. He hates you. Who's this guy? Why is he One here? One minute on Kill Tony can change your life. Wow. One minute, minute on, on Kill, Kill Tony can, can change, change your life. life. How is this not a fake doc? We should interview him and ask him if his life has changed. Yeah, we should get a hold of this guy and get him on the show. So just look up uh, Sam Hyde 2. I'm very no proud different. of uh, uh -oh, what here we've he's... been able to accomplish so far. I get to work with my funny friends and they're all different and silly and fuck. Oh my God, he missed another shot. <laughs> So he's going, I'm, and they're playing this music as if it's the end of the movie Magnolia, and everyone's learned their lesson, and now they're all giving their voiceover of what they've learned. Uh, he's telling you this whole story, and then he goes, fuck, because he missed yet another pool shot. Uh, and this is real. This is in a bit. My funny friends, and they're all different and silly and fuck. And, um, and uh, we get to travel the world together. It's a lonely road out there. No, and it's not. Getting to work with your friends and wow. show them Australia and wa look at Whoa. them laugh. Show it never them ends. Australia. It's a lonely road out there and getting to show your friends Australia. They could see for themselves. You're not the fucking tour guide because you were there once before. In his mind, he's doing as much of a favor for Jeremiah yes. as he just did for Oh, Sam they Hyde only too. get paid in favors and opportunity, you see. These guys, I'm, I'm showing them Australia. They didn't even know that this was a a living continent before me. I was like, yep, there are islands out there filled with people just like us. <laughs> Except they were buoyed by the blood of the aboriginals, you see. One minute on Kill Yeah, you learned you that your on your last trip to Australia. This is so douchey. Getting to work with your friends and show them Australia and look at them laughing while holding koala bears and... <laughs> 
You know, when you're out there all alone, even though you're having fun and it's going to big shows, nuts. it's just not the same if there's no one there to really share it with you. Oh, yeah, and sure. I'm sure you're enjoying the company you have, these fucking underlings, these terrible people. Believe me, you're not getting any joy being around them. If you're so great, you're either like the literally the stupidest people the comedy store has to offer, and now you gotta lug them around uh, with you. That's like I would rather bring around Joel's drum set than this fucking crew of people. That's a, and that shit is cumbersome, bro. So, not only am I proud of, of what we get to do with the fans, and they get to see something that they're into, and hear sounds that they recognize, like the what? cat and the bear and all these oh things. Oh my god. He's talking about the audience. They come out, they hear sounds that they recognize from past shows, like the bear or the cat. This would be like if I'm like, people come out, they hear the bomb sound effect, they go, oh, this is the red bar I've heard of before. Are you kidding me? That's what people are worth to Tony Hinchcliffe. He thinks they're a bunch of, and they are a bunch of idiots who are like, oh, the bomb sound effect, like the one from last week's show. Yes, that's what they're getting out of this for sixty-eight dollars plus fees. I get to work with uh, I get to work with my friends, and that's pretty priceless. Oh, you wow. son of a bitch! Ew, that's Brody Stevens. I hate my friends sometimes. These aren't your friends; they're your forced employees that all secretly hate they you. They would turn on you in a second. And by second. the way, you <laughs> hate them. You find them to be ridiculously stupid. They're your friends when you need them. Believe me, if um, I, a network came to Tony and said, Tony, we would love to put Kill Tony on the air. Primetime spot on NBC. But we have our own band and own sound. Ah, no, not a worry at all. These guys, um, trust me, there's no concern there. Wait a while. <laughs> Believe me. Oh, yeah. 100 percent there it is road kill how good was that a red bar feature a film what a feature film hey i hope you enjoyed today's scars club episode uh that's it for us the worst part of red bar is when it ends we will be back in days folks